If your Computer Smarts console is not turned on at this time, stop the tape and turn on your console. Follow its instructions and then turn the tape back on. A message will appear shortly on your Computer Smarts LCD screen, along with the tone. If you do not hear the tone or see the message, check the operating instructions for proper setup procedures. At the end of this tape, after the titles, there is important scoring information. Just begun. Computer Smarts. Welcome to Computer Smarts. Information for everyone. Computer Smarts. Are you ready for a challenge? You know that learning can be fun. Computer Smarts. Computer Smarts. When you play the games, you'll always win and open up a brand new world. Computer Smarts. A brand new world. A brand new world A brand new world Ah, uh, the only way to travel <laughs> DJ, I don't know what we do without you <laughs> But I'd sure like to give it a try sometime Wow, this is terrific So this is local culture, huh? Wow, I want it, I need it What is it? Now remember what I said We don't want to attract attention So try to act normal I am Acting normal. Right. Uh, I mean, try to act human. No problem. I can handle it. I say, proprietor, we would like to purchase this imposing stack of contemporary literature. Say what? He's been watching Masterpiece Theater again. We want to buy these magazines. Oh, why didn't you say so in the first place? Say, you guys look kind of strange. Are you from around here? Oh, uh, we're, we're from, from Atlanta. Albuquerque. I mean, Albuquerque. I mean Atlanta. Uh, oh, we're from... Out of town! Adler huh? I had a cousin from there, I think. <laughs> Kids these days. <laughs> you know how they are. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Incoming message on interspatial extra-dimensional subwarp channel D. We better get back to the clubhouse. Hey, where'd they go? Oh, well. They left this to pay for the magazines. Hmm. Intergalactic Express. <laughs> Never heard of it. Stand by to receive message on interspatial extra-dimensional subwarp channel D. You mean the phone from home? Either that or somebody dialed an incredibly wrong number. It's a list of today's three typing words. They're coming in right now. Message complete. Stand by to confirm today's three typing words. As you see each word appear on the television screen, type it in and then press the enter key on your computer smarts keyboard. Type music. Type noise. Type wonder. Good. Now remember, each time you see and hear one of those words and hear the answer tone, type it on your computer smarts keyboard as fast as you can and score extra points. <laughs> Oh, time for a speed drill! That's right, and here's the drill. Four different pairs of letters of the alphabet will appear on your television screen. Your mission is to type each pair of letters as fast as you can. Wait for the answer tone, type each pair of letters, and press the enter key. Sit up straight, and remember to start with your fingers on the home row. Ready, set, go!
Congratulations. Mission accomplished. Great. Now what are we supposed to do with all these? Well, Reigns, there's more going on in the world than what you see on television. So I thought it would be a good idea if we looked at some magazines. Okay, I'm looking at one, but it's not doing anything. You're supposed to read it, Beak. Of course, I knew that. What am I supposed to read? You could start with that headline on the cover. Hmm, nothing happened this week. Hey, that's a sentence. How do you know it's a sentence? A sentence is a group of words that expresses a complete thought. A sentence usually contains a subject and a predicate. A sentence starts with a capital letter and ends with a punctuation mark, a period, a question mark, or an exclamation point. Right. Un 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 punctuation. Un 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 punctuation. Un 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 punctuation. 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 Periods. And question marks. Ex 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 exclamation points. Every sentence ends with one of these. Un 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 punctuation. Un 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 punctuation. A declarative sentence like the song must end. We'll find at its end a period. An interrogative sentence asks the question. Will this song ever end? But, 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 question mark. Stop the music! An exclamatory sentence makes its statement with an exclamation point. Un, 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 punctuation. Un, 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 punctuation. An imperative sentence gives us a choice. We use a period when we drop our voice. And when we've had enough of this punctuation noise, we say, Stop! 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 Now look at your television screen and tell me if the group of words you see is a complete sentence or not. Type a Y for yes or an N for no. I typed Y for yes because it's a complete sentence. It's a complete thought. It starts with a capital letter and ends with a period. The dog is the subject and barks at the cat is the predicate. The dog barks at the cat. It's a complete sentence. Right, Beak. Now, how about this one? Type a Y for yes if it's a complete sentence, or an N for no if it's not. The answer is N for no. It's not a sentence. It's not a complete thought, and it doesn't start with a capital letter or end with a period, question mark, or exclamation point. I'm late for a press conference. I just remembered it. At least, I think so. I just can't remember. Uh -huh. Oh, there you are. Ruthless of the Weekly World Rumor. Uh, Senator Swell, could you make a statement about the recent rash of UFO sightings? What kind of rash was that? Could you be more specific? Did I have a rash? When did I have it? Do I remember it? Um, could you ask another question, please? Are you trying to change the subject? What subject? The subject is the person or thing the sentence was talking about. The subject of a sentence is usually a noun. And a noun is a word that's the name of something. A person, place, thing, or idea. Good. Now look at this sentence and type the noun in the subject of the sentence. D-O-G. Dog is the noun in the subject of the sentence. The sentence is talking about the dog, and dog is a noun. So dog is the noun in the subject of the sentence, the dog barks at the cat. What does that sentence have to do with UFO sightings? Our readers want the inside story, even if we have to make it up. Senator Swell, the people have a right to be told what to think. Uh, Senator Swell? Uh, what story? What sentence? I don't remember anything about it. At least I don't think I do. But if some person said something, I'm sure I didn't have anything to do with it. Unless it was something good. In which case, I'm confident that I will remember that it was my idea in the first place. Of course, I would have to predicate that answer on, um... What were we talking about? Predicates! The predicate is the part of the sentence that makes a statement about the subject. I have no statement on the subject. At least I don't think I do. I just can't remember. What's going on? If you want to know what's going on in a sentence, you need a predicate. And to make a predicate, you need a verb. The verb describes the action in a sentence. Without a verb, nothing would happen. Look at this sentence and type the word that is the verb. The verb is barks. B-A-R-K-S. Barks.
barks. It describes the action in the sentence. What does the dog do? He barks. Aha, I found the senator. In that sentence, the predicate is found the senator, and the verb is found. It describes the action in the sentence. Look at this sentence and type the word that is the verb. The verb is lost. L-O-S-T. Lost. It describes the action in the sentence. What did the senator do? He lost his statement. Well, no wonder I don't have a statement. Wonder! Type wonder. Wow! Look at this magazine! What's it say? Mouse and cat make mouse cat tear! That sentence has a compound subject. You bet it does! What's that? What is the subject of the sentence you just read? Cat! Both. You're both right, but only half right. They're both the subject of the sentence. The sentence has a compound subject. A compound subject means a sentence has more than one subject. For instance, what is the subject of this sentence? Beak and rains have a lot to learn. Rains. Beak. Beak. Rains. Beak, Beak and, and rains? Now you're getting the idea. Your names, Beak and Rains, are proper nouns, and they are both subjects in the sentence Beak and Rains have a lot to learn. Together they make a compound subject. Oh wow! Scientists and animal lovers have finally discovered a solution to the age-old war between cats and mice! That's another sentence with a compound subject. The two subjects are scientists and animal lovers. Together they make a compound subject. Domestic cats and field mice have been combined to make a bizarre new species. The natural curiosity of the cat and the impetuous nature of the field mouse combine to produce an animal that does nothing but continually switch channels between television reruns. Dogs, hamsters, birds, goldfish, and slugs are next on the list. Hey, can a compound subject have more than two subjects? If it can't, ten years of research go right down the drain. Sure it can. There's really no limit to the number of subjects in a compound subject. In the sentence you read, Reigns, there are five subjects in the compound subject. Dogs, hamsters, birds, goldfish, and slugs. Scientists and market research experts hope to create the ideal household pet that will do absolutely nothing and eat virtually anything. More than one person can do one thing. More than one thing can get done. A sentence can have more than one subject. Now doesn't that sound like fun? Compound subjects. The more the merrier. Compound subjects. Multiply your fun, because you and I and every girl and guy know the two subjects are better than one. Compound subjects. The more the merrier. Compound subjects. Multiply your fun. Compound subjects. There's a lot, you see. Compound subjects. There's you and me. Compound subjects. The more, the merrier. Compound subjects. Multiply your fun. Compound, Compound subjects. Somehow I knew I was asking for trouble when I let you two pick out the magazines. Where were we? Oh, yes. A compound subject can contain any number of subjects, just like in the sentences we read from the magazine. Each subject in the compound subject is the person or thing the sentence is talking about. Look at this sentence and type the letter next to the subject of the sentence. answer is K. The boy is the subject of the sentence. The boy is the person the sentence is talking about. That's right, Reigns. And we know there is usually a noun in the subject of a sentence. A noun is the name of a person, place, thing, or idea. Look at the sentence again and type the word that is the noun in the subject of the sentence. Oh, why? Boy is the noun in the subject of the sentence, the boy lives in a house. Good. A sentence with a compound subject simply has more than one subject. Look at the following sentence. The boy, the girl, and the cat live in a house. 
Count the number of subjects and then press the key with that number on it. Three! There are three subjects in that compound subject! That's right. Type the letter next to the first subject in the first compound subject. The answer is N. The boy is the first subject in the compound subject. Good. Now press the letter next to the second subject in the compound subject. The second subject in the compound subject is girl, so I press the letter P. Great. Now press the letter next to the third subject in the compound subject. The answer is you. The cat is the third subject in the compound subject. The boy is the first subject, the girl is the second subject, and the cat is the third subject in the sentence. So the sentence has three subjects, a compound subject. So the subject has three heads, eh? Do you know him personally? Could you get a photograph? Our readers demand to be shocked. We were just talking about a compound subject in a sentence. Now let me get this straight. The three-headed subject was in a sentence. No, uh, he was sentenced. What was the crime? Were all three heads in on it? Our readers demand to be horrified. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. Time for a speed drill! And this is a special drill. Look at the LCD screen on your computer smarts console and type each word you see there as fast as you can. Ready, set, go. Terrific! And remember, the faster you type, the higher your score. Now here's something that looks really important. Multi-talented Kurt Camera on stars in a hit series, records a platinum single, dances in a new video, and studies nuclear physics in his spare time. Really? What's it all mean? Beats me. It's easy to understand once you learn about compound predicates. The predicate is the part of the sentence that makes a statement about the subject. A sentence can have more than one predicate, even if it only has one subject. A sentence with more than one predicate has a compound predicate. In the sentence you read, all the different predicates in the compound predicate refer back to the same subject. Kurt Camera On is the subject. Stars in a hit series is one predicate. Records a platinum single is another predicate. Dances in a new video is another. You mean to tell me one guy does all that stuff? Well, you can't believe everything you read. Sure you can, because it's all true. And I'm here to show you with my new video. Yes, well, we, uh, you weren't planning to film it here, were you? Sure I am, because as the purchaser of the one millionth copy of Teen Preen magazine, you win the grand prize. Terrific! What's a prize? You get to co-star with me, Kurt Camera on, in my new video. Gotta sing and dance and smile and look cute all the time. And study nuclear physics in your spare time. Okay, so you can't believe everything you read. Ready, boys? Hit it! A predicate shows action, it's easy to see. But if there's more than one, like two or three, it's called a compound predicate, I know you'll agree. They're handy for a star like me. Cause I sing and dance and smile and look cute all the time. Strut and prance a while and look cute all the time. 
Keep my fans in style and work hard all the time It's all a part of being a star Wear flashy clothes Ooh-la-la. Strike a meaningful pose Watch it now, watch it Gotta do those concert tours and my video shows Gotta sing and dance and smile and look cute all the time Strut and prance a while and look cute all the time Keep my fans in style and work hard all the time It's all a part of being a star You call that music? Music! Type music. So you don't study nuclear physics in your spare time. You sell nuclear secrets to three-headed alien criminals, right? Uh... I'm not sure. How will it affect my image? You better talk to my agent. Your agent is a three-headed mutant alien intergalactic criminal. Oh, you know him? Hey, hey, come back here. Why don't you tell us more about compound predicates, DJ? All righty. If a sentence has more than one predicate, then it has to have more than one verb. Because every predicate must have a verb, right? Right. Oh, why? Because the verb is the most important part of the predicate. The verb describes the action in the sentence. Without a verb, nothing would happen. Hey, I knew that. Look at this sentence and type the verb that describes the action. The kids answer questions. And S-W-E-R. Answer is the verb. It describes the action in the sentence. What do the kids do? They answer questions. That's right. In a compound predicate, there is more than one predicate, and each predicate has a verb. Look at this sentence. The kids spell words and answer questions. Does it have a compound predicate? Type a Y for yes or an N for no. Yes! The sentence has a compound predicate. There's more than one predicate in the sentence, so it's a compound predicate. Good. Since compound predicate means more than one predicate, how many predicates are there in this sentence? The kids spell words and answer questions. Count the number of predicates and press the key with that number on it. There are two predicates in the sentence. Spell words is one predicate, and answer questions is the other predicate. Together they make a compound predicate. Right again. And since there are two predicates, there should be two verbs. Type the first verb in the compound predicate. verb in the compound predicate is spell. S-P-E-L-L. Spell. Great. G-R-E-A-T. <laughs> and what is the other verb? Type the word that is the second verb in the compound predicate. Answer. A-N-S-W-E-R. Answer is the second verb in the compound predicate. The answer is answer? What is this, the Department of Redundancy Department? You call those questions? Yeah. Why, when your grandfather and I were your age and went to school, the questions were so hard it took the teacher and 12 assistants three days just to write them down and ask them. Yep, yep. Why, your, your grandmother, my sister Helga, and I prepared emergency food rations and carried sleeping bags to school with us every day just in case there was a pop quiz. Yeah, and we couldn't just type in our answers, no. That was too easy. 
your grandfather, his sister Helga, my cousin Bongo on your mother's side, and I had to translate the answers into ancient Sanskrit, convert them to Morse code, build a telegraph machine with nothing but the supplies in our desks, and transmit the answers to the teacher's desk. Ha! Those were the good old days. Why, before that, my sister Helga, your cousin Bongo, my half-brother Bruno, we don't know about him, your sister-in-law Henrietta, my second cousin twice removed, whose name I forgot, and I had to invent the subjects, give the answers without any questions, and then figure out what the questions were. Now, now those, those were, were tough questions! questions. And those were some examples of sentences with compound subjects and compound predicates. You mean a sentence can have a compound subject and a compound predicate? Sure, why not? Here's a sentence with a compound subject and a compound predicate. Count the number of subjects and press the key with that number on it. Oh, let's see. The subject is beak and reins. One, two! There are two subjects in the sentence! Good. Now count the number of predicates and press the key with that number on it. There are two predicates. Spell words is one predicate, and answer questions is the other. Right you are. The compound subject is beak and reins, and the compound predicate is spell words and answer questions. The sentence beak and reins spell words and answer questions could be broken down into four separate sentences. Beak spells words, rain spells words. Beak answers questions, reins answers questions. Using compound subjects and compound predicates allows us to say all that in one much shorter sentence. Beak and reins spell words and answer questions. I see. You were kidnapped by an army of three-headed mutant alien intergalactic criminals, masterminded by Kurt Cameron, who forced you to answer questions about nuclear secrets. Mm -hmm. uh oh Time for a speed drill! That's right. And here's the drill. On the television screen, there are four words, but they are not in alphabetical order. Your assignment, should you choose to accept it, is to rearrange them into alphabetical order. Good. On. One. Go. Type the word that comes first in alphabetical order. Now, type the word that comes second in alphabetical order. Now, type the word that comes third. And now, type the last word in alphabetical order. The correct alphabetical order is go, good, on, one. Go and good come before on and one because G comes before O in the alphabet. Hey, how can you tell go comes before good? They both start with G and the second letter in both words is O. Looks like a tie to me. It's true that the first two letters in both words are the same, but after the O, there are no more letters in the word go, while good still has two more letters that affect its alphabetical order. Oh, I get it. So on comes before one for the same reason, huh? They both start with the letters O-N, but one still has one more letter that affects its alphabetical order. So the word one is the last word in this alphabetical list, huh? Go, good, on, one. One is last? There's something backwards about this place. No wonder they haven't discovered faster than light drive yet. Wonder! Type wonder.
Yes, well, there's quite a difference between alphabetical order and numerical order, but that's a lesson for another day. Well, I hope this isn't today's lesson. Listen to this. UFO aliens kidnapped magazine vendor Ed Barnes today. They forced him to sell them magazines. Then they vanished into thin air. Authorities are investigating the incident. That's a paragraph. Oh no, a paragraph. What's a paragraph? A paragraph is a group of related sentences about one subject or idea. The first sentence is usually the topic sentence. It tells what the topic or main idea of the paragraph is. A paragraph has three parts. The topic sentence, the body or detail sentences which give more information about the topic, and a concluding sentence. In the paragraph you read, the topic was the subject of the first sentence, UFO alien. Right! Sound like anybody you know? Boy, everybody around here looks like an alien to me. Oh. Run, hide, women and children first. Oh, Who is it? It's me, Colonel Bragg. Senator Swell is coming to town and I'm in charge of security. What was all that noise? Noise? Type noise. Don't mess with me. When you mess with Colonel Bragg, you'll have to answer to the government. Well, maybe the government has something to say about this. Here's a statement by a local magazine vendor. <clears throat> Three strange creatures invaded my store this morning. One was short, one was tall. The third wasn't tall or short. He was just weird looking. They bought some magazines and disappeared. That's another paragraph. Are you trying to change the subject? The subject of the first sentence was the topic of the paragraph. Three strange creatures. It was contained in the topic sentence. Three strange creatures invaded my store this morning. Well, it could have been one three-headed creature. It could have hypnotized him into thinking it was three creatures. Yeah, yeah, that's it. The first sentence in a paragraph is usually the topic sentence. The topic sentence tells what the paragraph is about and describes the topic or main idea. Now look at this paragraph and find the topic sentence. Beak and Reigns stayed in the clubhouse. They didn't go out. They didn't see any aliens. They didn't see anything at all. Type the letter next to the topic sentence. The topic sentence is you. Beak and Reigns stayed in the clubhouse. Of course it is. Uh, why? Because it tells what the paragraph is about and describes the topic of the paragraph. Now, find the subject of the topic sentence. Beak and Reigns stayed in the clubhouse. They didn't go out. They didn't see any aliens. They didn't see anything at all. Type the letter next to the subject. The answer is Z. The subject is beak and reins. It's a compound subject because it has more than one subject. And since it's the subject of the topic sentence, it's the topic of the paragraph. Beak and reins. Hey, that's us. So you were kidnapped by the three-headed aliens? No, I've got it. Two of the creature's three heads were named beak and reins. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but what about the third head? The mysterious unnamed mastermind. Our readers demand to be misled. <clears throat> After the topic sentence, the body or detail sentences give more information about the topic. They didn't go out. They didn't see any aliens. Those sentences give more information about the topic of the paragraph. Beak and reins. We didn't go out. We didn't see any aliens. Gee, that's not much of a story. So you didn't see anything, huh? See any what? Aliens! No, of course not. We've been here all day, uh, studying. Studying what? Paragraphs. Paragraphs! So you didn't see any UFO aliens? No, wait, I've got it. You're hiding the UFO aliens. That's why we can't see them. Look, Senator Swell is in town on official government business. He needs protection. He needs security. He needs a brain. He doesn't have time for UFO aliens. Well, then I guess he won't be coming to the club. 
What is this? Some kind of song and dance routine? Song? Dance? I didn't hear any music. Music? Type music. Here are three sentences that make a paragraph. A. She didn't find any here. B. She should look someplace else. C. The reporter is looking for aliens. They are not in the proper order. Type the letter next to the sentence which should come first in the paragraph. The topic sentence. The answer is C. The reporter is looking for aliens. Right. It's the topic sentence and it tells what the paragraph is about. The reporter is the subject of the topic sentence, so the reporter is the topic of the paragraph. Now, look at the group of sentences again. A. She didn't find any here. B. She should look someplace else. C. The reporter is looking for aliens. Type the letter next to the sentence that gives more details about the topic and goes in the middle or body of the paragraph. The answer is A. She didn't find any here. Good. It gives more details about the topic of the paragraph, the reporter. Many paragraphs end with a sentence that sums up the information from the topic sentence and detail sentences. It's called the concluding sentence. Type the letter next to the sentence which should come at the end of the paragraph, the concluding sentence. The answer is B. She should look someplace else. Very good. She should look someplace else is the concluding sentence in the paragraph and comes at the end of the paragraph. The correct order of the paragraph is C, A, B. Taxi! The topic sentence is, the reporter is looking for aliens. She didn't find any here. She should look someplace else. And that was the concluding sentence. So I guess that about wraps it up. Good night, drive safely, don't forget to use your seatbelts. Right. Well, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, mm -hmm. time for a speed drill. Right, and this is another special drill. When I say go, look at the LCD screen on your computer smarts console. Type the words you see there as fast as you can. Remember, the faster you type and press the enter key, the higher your score. Ready, set, go. Now, how can you prove you were here all day, hmm? No problem. We were working here on the new Kurt camera on video. A likely story. Got any witnesses? Sure. Here comes Kurt now. That's me. And I'm here to reshoot my new video because you guys didn't smile enough last time. <laughs> Ready? Lights. Camera. Act. Hold it. I'm in charge here. So you're the three-headed mutant alien criminal mastermind plotting to kidnap Senator Swell. Where are your other two heads? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. I'll just take three pictures, cut the heads off, and paste them together. <laughs> Our readers demand to be bamboozled. Just look at the camera. It would look better if he smiled. Okay, say cheese. No doubt about it. We're going to have to get soundproofing in here. There's too much noise on this planet. Noise! Type noise. Anyway, let's see how much you remember from today's lesson. Here is a sentence with a compound subject. The moose and cow are outstanding in their field. Count the number of subjects and then press the key with that number on it. There are two subjects.
objects in the compound subject. Now, look at the sentence again and type the letter next to the first subject of the compound subject. Answer is C. The moose is the first subject of the compound subject. And now, type the word that is the second subject of the compound subject. Cow! C-O-W! Cow is the second subject of the compound subject. The moose and cow are outstanding in their field. They must be very, very good. <laughs> now, here is a sentence with a compound predicate. The moose and the cow drink soda and watch television. Count the number of predicates and then press the key with that number on it. are two predicates in the compound predicate. Now, look at the sentence again and type the verb in the first predicate of the compound predicate. Drink! D-R-I-N-K is the verb in the first predicate of the compound predicate. And now, type the verb in the second predicate of the compound predicate. Watch! W-A-T-C-H is the verb in the second predicate of the compound predicate. The two predicates are drink soda and watch television. The cow and the moose drink soda and watch television. Sure they do. Hey, what's a moose? No time for zoology now. We're in the final stretch. Here is a paragraph. The show is almost over. It was very interesting. It was fun. Type the letter next to the topic of the paragraph. The answer is E. The show is the topic of the paragraph. Good. And what do we call the first sentence in the paragraph? The one that contains the topic of the paragraph and tells what the paragraph is about. Type the letter next to the name of the sentence that tells what the paragraph is about. Uh, the answer is H. The topic sentence. The topic sentence of the paragraph is, the show is almost over. Is it really? When is it going to end? Oh, right about now. Is this really the end? What happened to Colonel Bragg? What happened to the reporter? Will she be back next time? Do we want her back next time? Will we ever find out what town peak and brains really come from? Tune in next time for Buckle Up, It's the Law, or He's a Good Pup, He Can Drive the Car. Well, all right, everybody, I'm sure you just had some fun. Computer smarts. Playing with computer smarts. Information for everyone. Computer smarts. Now we're home from a journey, but you can always play again. Computer smarts. Computer smarts. Cause when you play the games, you'll always win and open up a brand new world. A brand new world Computer smart A brand new world Computer smart A brand new world Computer smart A brand new world
is everybody? Isn't this where they're making the new cut camera on video? I'm supposed to make a special guest appearance in it. At least I think I am. I just can't remember. Now let's see. Where am I? How did I get here?